try to stay focused on one thing for the rest of the hour. You don't even have to focus on the Dharma talk. If there's anything relevant to what you're doing, it'll come right in and you'll notice it, you'll hear it. If it's not relevant to what you're doing, it's a distraction. So let it go. It may be useful for somebody else, or it may be useful for the person giving the talk. But you don't have to focus your attention outside. Just keep it on the sensation of the breath. When you breathe in, know you're breathing in. When you breathe out, know you're breathing out. Notice where in the body you have the sensations that tell you, now you're breathing in, now you're breathing out. And notice how those sensations feel. Do they stay comfortable all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out? If there's some stress or strain at the end of the in-breath or the end of the out, it's a sign that the breath is too long. So allow it to be a little bit shorter. Or if the in-breath doesn't feel satisfying, you might want to try a little bit longer. See how the rhythm of the breath affects your sense of the body. And see also how your conception of the breath affects your sensation of the body. If you feel that you have to pull the breath in, you really have to fight to pull it in, that's really unnecessary, because the breath is going to come in and go out on its own without you having to fight. In fact, it's much better for the body if you don't fight. What this means is that you're trying to force it in a way that it doesn't naturally go. So just tell yourself, whichever direction the breath is going to come in and out of the body, wherever it's going to come in and out of the body, let it do its own thing. Your only duty is to keep track of the sensations and to allow those sensations to be comfortable, because the more comfortable they are, the easier it is to stay with the breath. What you're trying to do here is get the mind to settle down in the present moment with a sense of ease, with a sense of belonging, for several reasons. One, that it's simply good for the mind to have this sense of belonging right here, because if you don't belong in the present moment, you're always going to be running around in the past, running around in the future. And the mind that can't settle down is a mind that's going to wear itself out. So it's healing for the mind simply to be able to stay here with this comfortable sensation of the breathing. Whatever thoughts come through the mind, you don't have to pay them any attention. Your only duty is to stay right here and allow this process of being with a sensation of comfortable breathing to heal both the body and the mind. The other reason why we do this is because only when the mind is in the present moment can it see what it's doing. We spend most of our day looking at our thoughts, or getting into our thoughts, but we very rarely look at the process of how a thought forms, because that's the only way you're going to get around unskillful thinking, any kind of thinking that creates suffering, is to look at the process. And you see how cherry-rigged the whole thing is, how arbitrary it is. All the make-believe that the mind does, the messages it sends back and forth saying, well, make-believe this is this and that's that, and all of a sudden you've got a thought of some other place. It's like pressing the control button on a computer keyboard. All of a sudden the letters of the alphabet mean something else. An S isn't just an S anymore, it's a save. A C isn't a C, it's a copy. Because you've got that key pressed. It's the same with the mind. What would be ordinarily a sensation of the body, a sensation of the breath, suddenly becomes a thought of some other place, some other time. 
some other people. And those kinds of thoughts can wreak all kinds of havoc in the mind. Once you move into them, it's like moving into another world and then finding out whether it's a good world or not. And a lot of times it's too late. Once you're there, then you're in there, and then you're stuck, and it, it gets, can get very entangling. So this is how you unentangle yourself from the worlds of the mind, is by watching the process by which those worlds are created. And when you see the process, you give those thoughts a lot less credence. You begin to be able to use them simply when they're useful and to drop them when they're not. I mean, after all, if something is going to be useless or actually harmful, why create it? The reason we create it is because we don't realize we're creating it. It seems to just be there. It pops up in the mind of its own accord. Because the process of creation is an underground process. It's out of sight, and therefore it's out of our awareness. What we're doing as we meditate to bring the mind into the present moment is to put it in a position where it can see the processes of thought creation. Bring them up into the light of day. So even though it may seem simple, this process of just staying with the breath, staying with the breath, coming back to the breath when the mind wanders off, trying to be as sensitive as possible to the whole breath in and the whole breath out, without there being any gaps. It's a simple process, but it's an important one. It's a really basic skill for the survival of the mind for the survival of the well-being of the mind. So don't think of this hour as a long time. It's all very short. And try to make use of the whole hour to heal the mind. Do just this one thing. Stay with the breath. As if your life depended on it, because it does. <laughs>